this is a mess and this is the basic human need to be able to have a healthy yes. baby right you know this is our future um, a little bit about maternal death like I said earlier uh, the state of Arizona we had been collecting maternal death data but we hadn't been looking at it you know it was probably <laughs> bad let's not look you know <laughs> and so we passed a bill in 2019 that said we're going to take a look at it and so we did uh, get a federal grant to try to tease out what goes on there's a lot of uh, things in the maternal death um, statistics for example uh, there has been studies done by the March of Dimes that say that it could be related to um, too many uh, induced birth or uh, c-sections or uh, any sort of health problems with the mother but again you know we don't know we're not taking care of it across the world across the developed world women are have better outcomes for childbirth except the United States and then it's worse and again uh, Texas after Texas passed all those big anti-abortion bills that closed the Planned Parenthood screenings that not only did abortions but they also did uh, screening and pregnancy tests and things like that when they closed, I think all, I think they even have, maybe they have two clinics left or one in the state of uh, Texas. They took their maternal death rate from the middle of the, of the uh, national average to that of a third world country. And that's where these states, these red states are going because although they preach pro-life, they don't care what happens after the baby's born. And they don't care about the moms at all, in my opinion. So this is, the, this is the slide for the people, and they're probably not in this room, but the people care about the money more than the, more than the babies, right? And so this I, I calculated in the um, state of Arizona in this is, this is 2016, we had almost 8,000 premature births, okay? And if they're each a half a million to a million dollars, that's a lot of money. And so then I multiplied it by 52% because that's how many are paid for by access. And so in this one year, and depending on whether the baby is $500,000, $750, or $1 million, we are spending between $2 million and $4 million a year. Actually, it's billion <laughs> with a B. Billion dollars a year on premature birth. So again, we want to fund the schools get rid of this problem you know I mean there is a waste of money it's a waste of lives you know it sets these babies off on a on a bad path you know premature babies uh, they have a lot of health problems in the future so again if you don't care about life and you care about money you're wasting money on this issue by by ignoring it and I think it's done it's it's done you know we shouldn't be doing this and we're not the only state we're not the only state that's just throwing babies and moms you know out in the street in some ways and so again if we want to save money we want to fund education we want to fund child care subsidies child care subsidies like 80 million we're spending 4 billion we can get 80 million for child care subsidies out of that money so again this is this is one of the things that um, I'm sort of leading the charge along with Kelly Butler and some other women who are on the health and services uh, committee up in the uh, state and so we have put together this group and we want to come up with a package of bills for 2020. And uh, so, you know, I think that we can't just look at prenatal care. We have to look at the bigger picture of poverty, you know, and we have to look at the, uh, the um, education and how education dovetails into this. So, you know, obviously, I think we have to fully fund P20 education. I don't think we should just be talking about K-12. We should be talking about preschool and post-secondary either certificates or a bachelor's degree but something that will get these people the better job skills uh, I was at a conference earlier this week in New York City about finance my other hat that I wear in the legislature and one of the things that they said was that 25 percent of the workforce will have to be retrained by 2025 that's not very far because of automation right and so more and more the jobs that are going to be here are going to be uh, high level jobs that uh, require more than a high school degree particularly the level of high school that we're getting today when we're not funding high school properly so we need to look at uh, p20 for the kids who are coming through high school but we need to look at that post uh, uh, post high school education uh, retraining for workers also so 
we have a, we have a lot of challenges here. Uh, I also think that for the, the moms and the people living in poverty, we should definitely ex increase TANF to five years. I proposed a bill 2019 to do that. I'm going to push that even harder this year because it's so obvious that it's not just giving them uh, some extra cash, but that those moms living in poverty, they definitely need our help on that. And I also think that we should look at investigating uh, how much it would cost to raise it. I mean, at $92 per person per, e per month, that's not a lot of money. And other states uh, are giving more. I'm not sure what the federal cap is. I couldn't find it before the show today. <laughs> but I know that we could give more than 92, and I know we can give up to five years, and I think we should really look at this because, again, only 6% of the people who are eligible for TANF in the state of Arizona are actually getting it, and that's not fair, especially when we're giving away tax breaks for the top 10% yes. top yes. left and right, right? They got they got $435 million in tax breaks in 2019. We didn't do anything for the people on TANF. So, so anyway, I also think that we should reinstate the Arizona child care subsidies. We, we have the federal child care subsidies. Uh, we took that money, finally, from the feds. But we have not reinstated any of the state child care subsidies. Uh, we passed tiered reimbursement, which would give uh, families more money if they wanted to send their kids to high high dollar um, preschool, you know, high high quality preschool. But the uh, and it actually passed uh, the Health and Human Services Committee to to uh, to do the do the extra payments. We we enabled them in 2018. The Health and Human Services Committee said yes, we got this one billion dollars. Let's do that this year. Didn't get through. I guess there are not enough women in the legislature yet, you know? And so anyway, we didn't get that passed, but we're still going to push for that. Um, dental care for pregnant women on access. That was something we fought for on, on budget night. It's only $180,000, right? Jim says, you guys are quibbling over $180,000 in a $10, $11 billion budget. And I said, yeah, you know, that's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> and there were Republican women crying on the floor of the House because they were forced by their party to vote no. Now, they could have stood up and voted yes for $180,000, but they don't. Uh, I also think that uh, there's, a, there's a federal program that will help uh, women after childbirth. And again, we have one of the stingiest thresholds. We could have a higher threshold of income to help these women uh, qualify for these federal funds that would help them out uh, you know, after childbirth. Um, we could, again, use community health workers. I mean, for one premature baby at a million dollars, we could hire an army of community health workers yes. to go out to rural Arizona and, you know, you could go door to door, right? Yes. With these promotorists. It would be workforce development, you know? Uh, you could train them out on the Nebuchadnezzar <laughs> Reservation. That's yes. where the Arizona Cancer Center did some of the original research for community health workers was on the Hopi Reservation. You train the local people to go and talk to the other local people. Oh, how are you doing? Oh, your ankles are swollen. What did you eat yesterday? Lay off those Burger Kings. You know, too many french fries. Put your feet up. Take your blood pressure. A lot of these very simple things will help women be, be healthier in, in their pregnancy, but we're not doing them, obviously. Uh, and again, we could hire a lot of community health workers. I, I met with one of Doug Ducey's uh, staff people about uh, some of this data when I first was going over it um, back in the beginning of the session and I told her I said well you know a million dollars a baby we could hire these community health workers she goes oh we couldn't possibly hire anybody we'd have to privatize that I was like so far privatization hasn't helped us out right <laughs> Uh, also, I think that there are some of these things that are uh, very specifically for certain ethnic groups. We should we could have some targeted programs for those. We're still kind of developing that those ideas in case anybody's got suggestions. Uh, and we should have we should eliminate the barriers to family planning and access to care. You know that those women, a lot of those pregnancies are unintended pregnancies, right? Uh, and so if they had cheap or free birth control pills and the morning after yes, pill yes. and abortion if they wanted it, you know, come on. Uh, they said, uh, they said family medical leave. I mean, I could have a much longer list here, you know. But there are a lot of things we could be doing that we're not doing um, because we're giving our money away. And um, like I said, we are investigating this. We are going to have some stakeholder meetings. Uh, you guys can follow my website, uh, powersforthepeople.net. I have a blog there. 
Uh, I also have my Facebook, so if you want to be involved in this maternal and child health thing or involved in what the legislature does, you know, follow me and because I put updates there. But we are definitely going to be having meetings and we're going to put together a package of bills. Our goal is five bills. Now, I don't know if any everybody's going to go along with my ideas on TANF and things like that, but I mean, I think part of my uh, role at the legislature is to push the envelope. You know, to look at the data and say, this is where we should be. You know, I did, did that in 2017 on marijuana, and I had people who, whoa, whoa, I can't sign a marijuana bill. And those people are now proposing marijuana bills for 2020. So, I mean, hopefully I can push the envelope on maternal and child health, too. So, that's the end of my presentation. <laughs>